Should you have the freedom to think, say, and create as you wish? Or do you give permission for others to snuff out your light? Should you be afforded the maturity to make your own informed decisions? Or is that being abdicated for you by big government, big business, and big tech? In three, two, one, lights. Today, we're gonna to be talking about something a little bit more serious, the pandemic. Not the one that you might be thinking about, the one that's blowing up social media, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, the two-part documentary featuring Dr. Judy Mikovits and her talking points, if you will, about her belief that the government and big pharma and big business is conspiring together to shut down the American people, the American economy, with coronavirus, with COVID-19. Not that, per se. Yet, it has to do with that. A different kind of pandemic, a different kind of planned epidemic, if you will. And I believe it's far more nefarious. It's been going on for some time. And it's meant to reframe the way you think, and to reframe what you say, and to reframe how you interact with everybody else in today's day and age. All that coming up in just a second. This is Jason and welcome back for another video. If this is your very first time here, a very warm welcome to you. On this channel, we are all about reframing the way we see ourselves, other people, and the windows of our world through the lenses of videography and photography. So if you are here for the very first time, go ahead and smash that subscribe button right now, ding that little bell, and that way you'll be reminded of any future content as soon as it airs. Okay, about that conspiracy theory that I was kind of alluding to a few minutes ago, you know that planned epidemic, that pandemic, to get us to reframe the way we're interacting with the world? Yeah, that thing. Let's dig into that right now. Let's go. Now, I'm just gonna start by saying this. I'm really not much of a conspiracy theorist. Okay, maybe like there's like this much within me, but I'm certainly not like a flat earther or anything like that. And I don't believe that like the, the aliens are all coming to get us or anything like that or, or anything like that. And I certainly don't know if I believe that that the governments of the world, that the governments of North America and big tech and big pharma have all conspired together to create this super virus to shut down the world, to shut down our economies, to put us all into our homes and to get us to march in line and, and to step in line like a bunch of army of ants. This penis party's got to go, hey, hey. I don't think so, and here's why I'm gonna say that. Because <laughs> I don't think they're smart enough to be able to conspire together to be able to pull it off, and that's why I say all that. So, however, that all being said, I do think that there is an actual planned epidemic that's been in the works for a long time to curtail, if you will, to get us to reframe the way we think and what we say and how we interact with one another through free speech. Things are different today than they were when I grew up back in the 80s, right? When punk was in and, you know, things were just different back then, or even in the 90s, or even into the early 2000s. I would say prior to the advent of big social media as we all depend upon today, right? Today, it seems like if you say the wrong thing, don't think the right way, it's like you've got duct tape on your mouth. In today's environment, sometimes it kind of feels like we got duct tape over our mouths with what we're allowed to say and think and do, and well, especially with what we see. Ow, <laughs> that hurt having that duct tape over the mouth, but really, is that any different than having it over the eyes or over the ears? Should somebody else be able to censor what you read, what you watch, what you listen to? Should a government, should a media outlet, should a big company, should social media be able to say, 
you're not allowed to read that book or watch that show or watch this video because we don't agree with the ideology. Let's put a parenthetical in it. Talk about Plandemic, the two-part video series by this filmmaker and this physician, Dr. Judy Mikovits. I'm not endorsing it. I'm not supporting it. I'm not condoning it. I didn't even watch it. Well, a minute and a half, and then I shut it down because, quite honestly, I didn't want to watch something for a half an hour about what I don't think the government has the ability to pull off because I don't think the governments of the world are smart enough to pull anything off like that, at least not right now anyway. That's me. Regardless of if this woman is a wackadoodle, regardless if she's 100% factual or not factual, regardless if she was trying to promote herself or put somebody else down or whatever her agenda was or this filmmaker's agenda was. The question really isn't what did they do? The question is, should you and I have the right to be able to consume that media and then to therefore be able to make an informed decision on whether we want to believe that media to be true or should somebody else, should some institution, some organization, some entity have the right to be able to say, you're not even allowed to interact with it because we don't agree with the ideology. I think that's the more dangerous thing. I mean, here's my opinion. I mean, I think that kind of brings us back to the Middle Ages when Copernicus and Galileo were coming up with new scientific theories and publishing their findings, and then the Catholic Church saying, <laughs> well, slow down your horses, boys. We're going we're gonna to persecute you and confine you and lock you up because we don't agree with your ideology because it threatens our worldview. Or, a little bit more contemporary, back to the mid-1930s when certain fascist governments of Western Europe were banning books and burning books and telling people what they could and could not consume or believe because it didn't agree with certain governments' ideologies and worldviews that were promoting genocide and totalitarianism and, and world domination. What's more dangerous? Somebody putting on an idea that could be debunked by many, many, many people, or somebody saying, we don't agree with this ideology because it doesn't march and step with ours, so therefore we're going to ban it and shut it down. Therefore, we're going to reframe your ability to be able to think for yourself as a mature adult and human being and make an informed decision on what you do and do not believe. What's the bigger pandemic? A debunked conspiracy theory or a planned epidemic to curtail free speech and free thought. That was my soapbox for today. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm a content creator. I should be able to be able to think and express my ideas and to promote them and put them out there. And I think you should have the ability to be able to watch them without my content being censored, thus preventing you from being able to watch it. Because I'm just a little tiny fish. What about big ideas that are really truly important? Things that could really make a difference in this world. What if this doctor is right? Again, I'm not saying she is. What if something else comes along and somebody puts something out there that big government or big tech or big industry or big media doesn't like because it, it threatens them for whatever it is and they shut it down and the truth doesn't get put out there. What if? So I'm going to ask you a question to wrap it up. What's the bigger pandemic? The two-part video series titled Plandemic or two a planned epidemic to curtail your ability to think, speak, and believe freely. Comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And hey, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. Smash that subscribe button, ring that bell, and come back for more content. And also, check out these videos right here. You might get a giggle out of them, but hopefully, more importantly, you reframe the way you see yourself, other people, and the windows of our world. That's Jason, and that's my two cents for today. We'll chat with you again real soon in the coming days. Goodbye for now.